Hello, and welcome to the Parenting Roundabout podcast for the week of December 11th. I'm Terry Morrow, and I'm here with Catherine Haleko. Hello. For a weekly episode to talk about parenting in a roundabout way, along with a little pop culture. I feel like every time I read the date of our episodes, I am more and more appalled. December 11th. <laughs> Holy. Yes. The year it's just happening. keeps on going, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Sure does. Oh, my goodness. And on along the lines of life keeping on going, uh, your son is getting to the end of his first uh, semester in college. He All is. All is well. Yeah, as I mean, well as I, you can know I without think. Like, online grades. <laughs> right. Are you still, yes. you still keeping with that? He, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, I spoke to him today and he was, I forget. He was. He asked me if I would, you know, read over a paper for him, and I said sure. And or no, before that, I, he had told me about this other paper he was working on, and so I said, so you know, you have like a paper and two tests, because I was, you know, thinking through what his various classes were. I'm like, because one of his classes is, is acting. How are they going to have a a final for that? Well, they are. Oh, my. <laughs> for his, I think it's, he said for his acting class, he had to write a paper, which is the one that mm. I reviewed. It was pretty short, but. Yeah. And do a scene, and there's some kind of a test, and wow. I think that's it for acting. And then... There's like two things for his French class. There's two things oh. he has to write a paper for his math class. Like, wow! I didn't even have time to uh, get a chance to ask. Like, <laughs> what do, what do you mean a paper for your math class? Oh my! <laughs> so yeah, so I'm like, okay, well, you know, just make a list, you know, in order of priority, and just punch through it yeah uh, he said yeah i have a mental list i th a physical list would be a good idea <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah that I would think. be a good idea let's do that <laughs> <laughs> hmm. oh, i would have loved to have a paper in my math class because i was well, yeah. a plus with the papers not so much with the math not so much with the math right <laughs> yeah you're right i, I could have used that myself probably yeah, depending on the topic but right interesting Yes, I'll have to check into what that yeah what that actually entails. But plus, he's involved in he has various rehearsals and things, oh. rehearsals and workshops, um, tonight and over the weekend, which seems like a bad time for yeah. those to be scheduled. <laughs> yeah, because they're for things that are in the future. You know, oh. they're. There for things that are down the road. So yeah. seems like seems like we don't need those right now. <laughs> That's right. But when are his actual finals? Next week. Oh my. Mm -hmm. Right there. And he's studying yeah. hard, is he? Well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> he at least wrote this paper. Okay. Um and the other paper that he has to do, he has a you know, a plan mm -hmm. at last, at last time we discussed it, he had a whole, a whole plan. In fact, he had a plan for a paper that sounded like it was going to be about 20 pages long oh um, and only needed to be four to six. So <laughs> I discussed, it. I discussed ways to <laughs> make an bit. outline, young man, yes. make an outline. Mm -hmm. Greatest tool for college papers or any kind of papers. Right. One, two, three, ABC, baby. Yeah. I, I wrote an entire book that way. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I just made an outline, then I made it, then I added a bunch of details to right. the outline, then I turned the outline into actual prose, and then I was done. That is so. the way to do it. Mm hmm. So hand mm -hmm. that on down to the next generation. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hmm. So. Well, the speaking of finals, Dancing with the Stars, <laughs> yeah, had their final round the other day, and uh, did it go about the way you thought it would go? Well, first, let's just say, can we just say three hours, and you're still announcing the winner over the closing credits? Right. What 
the heck? Make an outline dancing with the stars. (laughs) One, two, three, ABC. Plan your three hours. Come on. And they're still, they're yelling at the people to try to get them to comment. Like, they can't say anything now. This is not going to (laughs) work. Could we have cut that whole first half hour? Yeah. Would have been a good thing to cut. Right. There's things you can do when you only have three finalists that you can't really do when you have five. It just went right. on forever. Right. It's just so annoying. And and I have no trouble with, with the results. It's fine. It's predictably was that. And that's great. Yeah. But they, when they lost me was when they didn't give Allison all tens for her first No, time. I know. That's and since when? Everybody gets tens. I'm not saying every time in the history of Dancing with the Stars it's happened, but traditionally it has. And what yeah. would it have cost them? She was fifth place, yeah, so clearly two points wasn't going to rocket her into the lead. Right. It just seemed so petty. Yes, and, I agree. I was mad. So then I missed Sochi's final because I was setting up a – ABC account in my husband's name so I could give Allison 10 more votes just out of spite. <laughs> oh, but uh, there just seemed like a lot of pettiness this season in uh-huh. the judging. Uh, mm, just made me unhappy. Yeah. But, uh, you know. Yeah, I that, uh, you know, since when has somebody done a, cont- a, done a freestyle and not just – gotten all tense and it was an adorable freestyle and she was was. dancing all through it and it was full of joy and it was about her and that's exactly what you want in a freestyle i don't know what that thing sochi did was Uh, difficult looking i guess but Mm -hmm. i don't feel it was about her maybe it was Mm -hmm. but jason's was adorable I love so Jason's. fun, and that was about him too. I mean, that's just like the, his whole experience there has just been sort of joy and happiness, and right. learning how to do cool things. Um, Charity had a lovely cheerleading routine, right? Which got all tens, <laughs> which, even though which not oca- so much with occasional dancing. occasional dancing broke out, but it was rare. Yeah, I was a little surprised they came in fourth. I thought yeah. they might go a little higher but yeah i don't know what that thing was that ariana did love you ariana and pasha but that dance that freestyle was not good to me it felt like it felt like she was a backup dancer at a concert (laughs) yes you know i mean like they did put her out in front and whatever but it just didn't there was so little partnering and it just yeah I, I didn't yeah, love it. I think I feel like Allison and Jason were the standouts on the uh, freestyles, whatever the judges may have thought. Well, I loved Jason's. I thought that yes. was extremely fun, so fun and cool. And, you know, Daniela in her big trousers. And yes, I just thought and that, that little, was extremely... cut off cut off shirt with the tie. <laughs> just, yeah. <laughs> yes, that was very fun. I, yeah. I, made the mistake of allowing myself to believe that Allison could win. And of course that was never going to happen. And I'm yeah. sad that she came in fifth, but okay. You know what? A perfect score would have been her mirror ball. You guys stop <laughs> right. it. Uh, but I would have liked Jason to win then if not. Uh-huh. So yeah. the scoring on this, I mean, I, I have been guilty of thinking too much about dancing with the stars in the past weeks and, <laughs> conspiracy (laughs) theories and this and that yeah i know it's so easy and fun to do and then afterwards i think i criticize other people too for doing this you can't take it too seriously but sochi's going on tour Mm -hmm. other finalists aren't going on tour charity is charity is Mm -hmm. uh harry's going on tour yeah what's up with that (laughs) who we said why are they not scoring him low enough to get him out early Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know it's hard not to think Jason's not going on tour. Allison's yep. not going on tour. Ariana's not going on tour. She's going to go be in Chicago on Broadway, by the way. She is? She's going to play Roxy Hart. Ariana? Yes. Oh. Yes. She announced it right after it was on social media. So, on Broadway? On Broadway. Wow. Their sort of weirdness in their scoring just opens the door to people going, well, of course, it's because uh-huh. this. And of course, it's because that. Right. So, but you know, it was a it was a fun season. There was a lot of good dancing. Mm-hmm. People seemed to get along with each other and enjoy each other very much, which is what I like to see. Right. And, uh, to the point where Harry was crying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Harry was crying when it was it Allison. Yes. 
Yes, after Allison's dance. I thought that was cute. People were criticizing Harry for getting into all the pictures, you know, the bad, the stepping into people's interviews and being getting his face on camera and stuff. But I thought it was sweet. I like thinking that these people were all friends. Well, and also he's a tall person. Like yes. he, <laughs> it's hard for him to stay. He kind of can't help it. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. So for the second year in a row, Dancing with the Stars has been won by a teenager. Mm -hmm. Can we have old people dancing with the stars so that the (laughs) actresses of a certain age can have a chance on this thing? Right. Maybe they need to do this by age level. Oh, by the way, So You Think You Can Dance is coming back. Have you seen this stuff? With Max from Dancing with the Stars Mm -hmm. as one of the judges. Oh, interesting. Okay. Kita wanted him out of the house, apparently. And uh, also Allison Holker uh, taking mm. over for her late husband. Oh, my gosh. Wow. So. Well, what's that? Yeah. So it was always it's always fun to see on, on the uh, Dancing with the Stars finals, all the people you forgot were on this show. Right. <laughs> Coming back. <laughs> <laughs> and then they had that little Christmas dance with. Whitney and um, <laughs> with what's random, his name, the race yeah. car guy. Yeah, Helio. And, like, how did they? I get, I get. They had the one, the pro that won with uh, Alfonso, yes. and the star that won with Julianne. But then there were like three more that just, <laughs> just happened to be of in other town. random winners. Yeah, <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> And based on Whitney's Instagram, it was pre-taped. Yes, it was. So. I saw that. I was saying, babe, are you supposed to be announcing right. on social media that you're home right now? I right. think that they probably would have just assumed everybody thought that was live. Yeah. But, well, I certainly did until she <laughs> said that. <laughs> oh, well. Oops. Um, <clears throat> But that does explain how a little bit of how they manage to do all the things that they do in three hours, which, again, they didn't need to do. <laughs> they didn't need no, to fly Whitney not. across the country so that she could appear in a three minute dance. They no. could have taken that three minutes and used it at the end. Yes, they could have so, so much. They could have. <laughs> yeah. I also really like Jason's Foxtrot. Mm-hmm. That was pretty. That was that was really fun, too. A lot of good dancing. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it is what it is. I just wish. Yep. Give Allison the dang tans. What's the matter, you guys? It just, that just, I, I believe I uttered an expletive when that happened because it's mm-hmm. fun. I just said, what? It was such a joyous <laughs> number, too. <laughs> mm-hmm. And really, you're going to be petty just to the last minute, giving her yeah. less than tens? Do not like. Yeah. But we have to look on the bright side of things. Uh, no Tyra this season. Excellent. That's right. On ABC and streaming, so more people could watch. Mm-hmm. Huge improvement. Especially because I got rid of Disney Plus in the <laughs> <laughs> since the last season. Yeah. So I would have been stuck. <laughs> Significantly less squirreliness. I still have my quarrels with the judges. But in general, mm-hmm. things were pretty straightforward. You were on yeah. missed on the finals. And I think it's because there were five people when it's just three. Remember how they used to have the thing where they would go into their rehearsal room and there would be pictures up on the wall of them all of various mm. points in there. Right. And you have the little thing between the two partners. That was really nice. Yeah. I don't know if they've been doing that lately, but I miss that from whenever they did. Yeah. And they also had with five people, they had more of the like dorky videos from their f- yeah. friends and family and yeah. their cat. <laughs> The cat was good. Jesus I like that. <laughs> uh, but yeah. again, yeah, t- a use of time that possibly is not. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Pace wise, the show had some issues, and I just mm-hmm. I hate it when I really miss. And I don't know why they can't do this now that they're streaming. When it was two days, mm-hmm. when you got like a whole short episode to say goodbye to people. Yeah. That's too bad. Yeah. But, you know, we'll watch it again. We'll be back. We will be back. We'll be back. We might not be nice, but we will be back. (laughs) Speaking of not nice, Maude Beaton, she's not nice. 
she is not nice. We are we are gliding on over to the Gilded Age. We are walking across the podcasting Brooklyn Bridge to the Gilded That's Age. Right. And uh whoa. It's tragic. I, All I kinds saw of that tragic. Plot thread coming and I was really really hoping that would not be it. That Yeah, you really not. called that one. Yeah. Oh no. Just as Agnes was being nice. I know. She'd like she was rewarded for her. Her heart had grown three sizes, and now she's going to have a stake put through it. Oh, right. man. <sighs> oh, I, I did not. What I did not see coming is Maud being a con woman. Oh, you thought that she was I going to be. I thought that the whatever she sent him to was maybe not good, but mm-hmm. I didn't see her just being on the wind like that. Right. Wow. And I guess the the guy who was portraying the banker was trying to help Oscar out. Yes, he was. He was. Or un- unless that is part of the con. Right. But he seemed like to be like, take it and go, man. That's right. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe so, but he didn't listen. No. Oh dear. So I hope Jack gets his patent really quick because he's going to be out of work pretty soon. <laughs> I hope he can start selling clocks to <laughs> keep Agnes in. <laughs> oh, golly. And just, oh, to have it happen right on the heels of Luke dying. Right. That's brutal. That was extremely brutal. How how could she, I, I suppose at this time in history, there was no way for her to keep him from ac- having access to the money. Him being right because he's heir. a boy. <laughs> That's right. So, but still, I mm-hmm. uh, do not like. Yeah. I was really hoping I was wrong on that one. Yeah. Mm. And uh, also not so nice after all. George, there's the George <laughs> we knew and loved. <laughs> He wasn't really doing a good thing. He had a plan. He was just biding his time. (laughs) Yes, he had a plan with these (laughs) union guys, which, of course, Henderson saw right through, but had no choice, basically, but to go along with it. Yeah. Yeah. This is out of gratitude for you not shooting me and my son. I guess I'll go along with this. I guess we're in this together. all the other... All the other railroad folk, not so pleased. No. All sorts of train wars and school wars and right. opera wars. Opera wars now the... This disaster pulls a rabbit out of her hat, but it is insufficient. Yeah, just another, another like, public declaration in order to try to get somebody to do what you want. Just like yeah. Marion, who seemed, when she was on the step saying goodbye to Dashiell, yeah. seemed to be like, all right, you know, I'm good. I can do this. Yes. And then who and should then show up? Immediately. But <laughs> Goes walking with Larry. Our pal And Larry. uses his handkerchief. I don't know. <laughs> I know that was the thing. This was the, bull, you know, the, uh, the uh, gentlemanly thing to lend a lady your handkerchief. Right. Oh, where's this thing been? Mm. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Should she be using another man's handkerchief Ooh, when, when she's she is engaged, engaged to be married? Should she be walking with him? Right. A single young rake about town? Mm-hmm. At least he hasn't lost his parents' money, so. That's right. I don't, somehow don't think George would uh, no, ever yeah, no. let George that George is happen. still around <laughs> is what keeps that from happening. Yeah. Though, though Bertha might want to get some codicils in the will there right now. <laughs> um, oh, geez. What such tragedy. I know. All at Wonders once. Wonders never you know. cease. Bad stuff you never ceases in this particular one. <laughs> yes. Fireworks indeed. Mm-hmm. But uh, excellent. A- I, what, I don't know the name of the actor who plays Oscar. His name is Blake Ritson. Blake Ritson hats off to you man because you could see from the first look on his face that this was pretty much new what was mm-hmm. gonna happen mm-hmm. it's like no 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 yep <laughs> oh man and it was george who 
Yeah, it was a chance encounter yeah. with George Russell that oh, started my. him off on that oh, terrible journey of discovery. <laughs> just, oh, but re- you I, just called it from minute one. I was very sad to be right. Unaccustomed to feeling sorry for Oscar, but... Right. And really... Why? What an idiot. Yeah. Why? But at the same time, boy, to make a mistake like that and then have to go tell your mother she's now destitute. <laughs> Especially that mother. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Well, one more episode to see how that pans yeah. out. Yeah. But oh, next week, we've got to any, resolve any the opera that- war. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Any chance that the Reverend uh, is secretly loaded? We can hope. That's for sure. <laughs> the, the, the clergy, you know, it's definitely known as a lucrative profession. Right? Family money. You know, it could be family money. Mm-hmm. He could come from money. Right. He could... Uh... He could have had a, a had a grateful parishioner somewhere along the way who set him up. Come on. One hopes. <clears throat> really. Yikes, this it's rough. Yeah. I was unhappy about it. I know. That was... And Peggy, do not be drinking with your boss. Oh, I know. Peggy. Audra has her figured Peggy, out. Peggy. Yes, she does. <laughs> and should, you know, immediately lock her in her room. And... <laughs> At the earliest possible opportunity. Yes. She's got that guy figured out. Mm-hmm. Oh, my. That can't be good. And what do we make of, of Watson's daughter just turning up and saying, Hey, how about just be your old self, an apartment in New York, and be part of our life? That'd be good. Right. Yeah. We knew there was a reason he wasn't going to. Is she friends with Maud B? Come on. <laughs> We knew he wasn't going to San Francisco for some reason. Yeah, but this, this, do we trust this? Do we just think she's, it, her husband could not have gone along with this? Right. I feel like Although he's going to quit like... his job and then the husband's going to be like, no way, we're not going to let him stay in New York. Mm. Yeah, it's fishy. Yeah. It doesn't seem right. Yeah. Um, But she seemed quite sincere. Mm-hmm. But not like, you know, fidgety, like her husband put her up to this and she's doing it against her will. Right. But maybe he told her she could do it and then he's going to do something. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Treacherous. Yes. All of it's it. All quite treacherous. All of it. Well, next week. Boy, is Mrs. Fain going to feel bad when she finds out what her matchmaking mm-hmm. has brought about? Yeah. Oh, she's got some. Vet these people, lady. Vet them. She's got what some money. Doing? She'll have to. She can chip in. Chip in to mm-hmm. the. Oh, the Oscar Van Ryan disaster fund. Yeah. Come on. It's rough. Pass the hat. <laughs> Maybe she could sell her box to somebody. Oh God. <laughs> well, it's all gonna. All the opera wars is gonna. Be settled next week, so. I guess so. I'm sure they'll leave some other things hanging for us, but. Oh, of course. Um, Always. But this is going to be the, the season finale in terms of yeah. winning and losing. Yeah. Wow. So we're going to watch that. And because we are done dancing. Yeah. We are going to watch a movie. Look at us. Look at us watching movies that came out somewhat recently. It's called <laughs> Quiz Lady. It's on a- I saw on Hulu, and it stars okay. Aquafina and Sandra O oh as sisters. Who I, I quit Hulu in out of I know you annoyance. you were mad. They would not process my credit card, and then my daughter just kind of decided to subscribe to herself. So now I have to sneak back through the back door. <laughs> Will Hulu know I'm there? <laughs> We thought you left. <laughs> well, I'm somehow getting HBO Max and I thought I canceled it. So who knows? Uh-oh. And my child is the one who pays for Hulu as well. <laughs> so, we got a good deal yeah. here. It's, that's fine. Yeah. 
<laughs> so in Quiz Lady, these sisters have to go on a game show to try to get money f- because their mother has cr- in in some sort of debt. So it does have they, some parallels have, to the Gilded Age. Do they have age. quiz shows in the Gilded Age? <laughs> I know. That's what Oscar needs to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all we need is for him to start oh. gambling. That would really. Oh. Yeah. I don't think he has anything to gamble yeah. with at this Let's point. Let's not give him any ideas. The house? <laughs> I don't know how... Oh, gosh. I. Yeah. The Van Ryan money. <laughs> what have you done? Bad day for Agnes. Real bad. Yep. Mrs. Armstrong is going to be all over this. See? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Nothing good ever happens. That's right. Fire her first, Agnes. Fire her first. You're probably not paying her that much, but still. <laughs> Keep Bannister. He seems like a good... <laughs> yeah, really. Bannister and the cook. Yes. The young maid can find someplace else. Yeah, she's young. She'll... Jack is, is embarked on his career as a clockmaker. Right. So he'll, he'll land on his feet. That's right. So now it is once again time for... Catherine's Library Find of the Week. This week, because as you know, the library has been closed for mm. a few weeks. Um, <laughs> and I do have some some things I have saved up for this feature, you know, for this segment. Good but thinking. today I want to mention a book that is not yet in the library, but I hope will be. Uh-huh. It is called The Rings of Jeffrey. And it is by Nello McDaniel, who is a relative of mine. And so oh. he had me help him with this book. Nice. Um, I copy edited it for him. Are you mentioned in a dedication or I am mentioned. I am mentioned okay. in there somewhere. So it's been... It was a it was a fun process. Um, it, it's a middle grade book, and it's about a boy who is a soccer player and a dancer, and he's a choreographer. He's he's kind of a almost like a prodigy of choreography. Uh-huh. Speaking of Dancing with the Stars, yes. And then he he becomes paralyzed. There's an accident, and he becomes paralyzed. And uh, so he is using a wheelchair and then he meets uh, some other kids who also use wheelchairs and he finds out that people dance in wheelchairs. Um, And so he adapts a dance that he had been choreographing and turns it into something that he can do. Uh, he incorporates the wheelchair into the dance. Cool. So it's 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 a lot of fun. Um, it's it's a great story. He's a fun character. Um, and this is based on the author uh, has been a dancer in his in his professional dancer earlier in his career, and as a child had some surgeries and other medical issues that did require some time in a wheelchair for him Mm -hmm. as well. Um, No longer, but so he has some of that personal experience in it. What a great Um, idea for a book. Yeah. Age group, especially. Right. Yeah. So you can get it on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and other places. And uh, hopefully it will spread far and wide. And there's also, there is a sequel that I've already read, and there's even going to be a third one. Nice. So it's exciting. And please, as you're reading it, appreciate the meticulous copy editing. <laughs> Unless you find an Unless you mistakes. find an error, in which case we have no idea who did it. That was not my fault. <laughs> Post-production. No, it, probably, it probably was. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to put a little couple of Easter eggs in there for people to... Yeah, this is is for Terry. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) So they can feel superior. This is a service we provide as copy (laughs) editors. So it is called The Rings of Jeffrey. And I wish it well. I hope people will check it out. That's exciting. Yeah, yeah. So now we're going to take a spin through the archives and see what we were talking about three years ago, five years ago, and eight years ago this week. Yes. We, three years ago, December of 2020, we were talking about paying it forward and specifically how parents might pay it forward, whatever (laughs) it is, right? Um, 
because I, we, we, I think what prompted this was one of those like chains yes. of, well, I'll pay for the person behind me at the drive thru. I've never been um, in one of those chains, which is probably, probably well, because I wouldn't know what to do, but I wouldn't know what to do either. And like, is it a pain in the neck for the people who work I would there? Think so I would think they would like everybody to just pay that. for their own order and be done with it. Just pay for your own thing and move <laughs> along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <sighs> but I think there's lots of ways that parents can mm-hmm. pay it forward to people coming behind them because, you know, learning from experience <laughs> <laughs> and then sharing that yeah. learning is uh, not always appreciated, but it's helpful. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm trying to think anything that to, to update that anything that I would do now at this phase of my kids' lives to, right. I don't know, everybody's sort of on their own path at this point. I, I've i been asked right. to speak to the special needs parents group in our school district, which did not exist, I think, when my kids were in school. I think it's maybe right at the mm, end, they mm-hmm. were just starting it up, and my kids were already, you know, getting ready to graduate. So, you know, right. and I... I thought about it, but I really don't feel like I have anything to say to anybody anymore. I don't know what the situation is in the schools. I don't know how things have changed in special education since I've been out. My kids are in such a different phase of life. I can, you know, give the same advice I've been given forever, but who knows if that's, yeah. I don't know if it's even good Uh anymore. I think I've talked about the fact that I look back on some decisions I made and now and I'm kind of going, "Eh, maybe not. (laughs) <laughs> so it's like, do I want to give advice to other people? Probably not. Uh-huh. A former coworker of mine, a friend of her daughter's, was having trouble with, spe- in, with the special education department and called me and asked if I could help. And it's like I gave her, you know, I had immediately a bunch of, oh, I got to do this. This is this is what's happening. This is what's going on. And, you know, and then I'm like, I have no idea what's going right. on. Maybe it's none of those things. <laughs> so I referred her to somebody who's... who's uh, helping people in the district now and it's like i'm just gonna sit back and retire so done paying it forward right. y'all are on your own well you did <laughs> you did at least give her a referral I to did. somebody that's true instead yes. of just saying like well i don't know <laughs> no <nothing>. clue <laughs> yeah so i had just coincidentally been talking to somebody who was doing some advocacy work so but other than that i wouldn't have known what to yeah mm-hmm. stuff changes you know Personnel right. changes and laws change and programs change and you just sort of, I don't even know what I would tell people about raising 30-somethings at this point. <laughs> yeah, everybody's got their own deal. Yeah. Are you going to gonna pay forward how to make a bun now that you're gonna, <laughs> you're out of that business? I've been out of that business for a long time. <laughs> You're almost, uh, you know, going to be completely out of the skate parent business. Well, although now my daughter's talking about maybe trying out for a team oh. next year. Okay. <laughs> One of her current teammates is is working on her to um, try out for a team that's based in basically in Detroit. So, oh no, is this not a college based team? Not a college team. There's just mm-hmm. like freelance uh, skating teams all over the place. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. I mean that's what most of them are, yeah. right? Like the ones that are littler kids too. Right. It's it's a club, uh-huh. you know, and they'll have all different levels. And this particular club has a level that could work okay. for her. So, so we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I do feel like when I go to these competitions. Especially when I'm like in the hotel and there's always another team yeah. or more teams in the hotel. And there's um, some, you know, oftentimes littler kids. And I just want to be like, I know what it's like. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> Can you believe I'm still doing it? <laughs> Except now I don't have to like make the bun and, yeah. you know, pack the skate bag and all that stuff. I, I don't, I don't have to do any of that anymore, but yeah. it doesn't really end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, I was at a, I was at a holiday party for 
kids and adults with special needs, but there was a lot of little kids running around. And every time I would see Mm -hmm. a parent, like, just standing off to the side where their kid ran back and forth, you know, I would Mm -hmm. go over and say, that used to be my son. I remember that. Isn't it nice that you can just let them run here? And, you know, somebody else, a kid was, was acting up and I was like, I've been there. It's okay. You know, yeah. you're in a good crowd here That's... for that now. Nobody's going to have it. So I, I was paying right. forward mercy, which I did not receive all that much. Of. Yeah, I think that's it huge. I feel like so strongly. I feel of, like they, yeah. those people probably really appreciate that. I hope so. That. I hope so. And not just, oh, what, just leave me alone. I'm just trying to <laughs> watch this kid. Right. <laughs> Reminding me so strongly of when we would just, anytime we went out someplace, my son had like a certain amount of time he could sit and then one of us would just take him out and either yeah. run around in a you know outside or go sit in the car cuz he liked to sit in, behind the wheel of the car and just play with keys mm-hmm. and stuff like that so right. i remember those days i don't have to do that anymore he yeah. can sit still now but i anytime i see somebody acting up in church or in a you know just i just feel like saying it's okay i understand you're not alone right Right. Let your little kid run up to me. I will be kind. I think as long as you do it in the space of like, I I get you yes. and not it'll get better yeah, no, or no, no. like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, that, exactly. Like it's such a difference yes. because I mean, when my kids were babies and not sleeping, uh-huh. if someone would say like, oh, this time goes so fast, enjoy it. Or, or like, you'll see, they'll sleep through the night yeah. any minute now. Like, no, they won't. Stop <laughs> it. <laughs> like, I hate it. That is not that. helpful. No, it is no. not helpful. But, but hearing someone say like, this is a good, this yes. is an okay place. Right. Or, you know, I just know what you're going through. Like yeah. that's, just let, I think that's let really them be valuable. Their, their little, uh, their, let them be themselves. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I would have liked to have heard that more back in the day. <laughs> right? Yeah, for sure. I think there were less places to hear it than there are now. Mm-hmm. But, uh, right. There's no transition to make from this to our next archive <laughs> item, which is holiday gifts for pets. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I don't know. When I was a kid, we used to give our, our pets presents. I And maybe when we first started getting dogs as a family and my kids were younger, we did. But now we do not. And we certainly don't do the pet decor you know, sweaters and hats and antlers and what all. Although, right. although my dog is going to her cousins for the holidays, as we discussed last That's week. Right. And they do do those things. So, uh-huh. so she may get a holiday experience. We'll see how she likes it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can see that you wouldn't be getting her things because you you barely get things for, you barely That's get right. gifts for each other. That's right. We don't get things for each other. Maybe we'll pick her up something at the gift shop at the resort. Yeah. Let's see, look for a little. Something you can there. all you can all chip in together, and yes. they'll probably have something there. I could give her the bandana I got at the Special Olympics to hide my parathyroid scar. I'm not using it yes. anymore. Yes. My doggy there bit in bandana. She could wear mm-hmm. it now. She'd wear it well. It would look sporty on her. It would look good on her, and not ridiculous like it looked on me. It served a purpose when you needed it, it too. It did indeed. And it was the only thing we could find That's at right. the time. Um, so you do, you give your pets stuff, right? Well. You dress them up and. I don't give them stuff, <laughs> but other people do. Yes. And Not naming any names, your husband. Yeah, exactly. And I did, I think we actually talked about this in the past couple of weeks, but I did put on my wish list a receptacle for storing toys yeah. because the situation is quite out of hand right now. So yeah. yeah, it needs it needs containment right at the moment. Our dog has disemboweled most of her toys, so we really do need to get her some new ones. Yeah, most of ours are are not. So <laughs> so there's no reason. I try to throw them away when they get oh. that way, but. Um, yeah. So, and I, and I feel bad throwing them away if they're yeah. not destroyed. So I need a bigger place to put them. <laughs> that is for sure. Yeah. Our, our storage place is a pile 
next to the hall table. Yeah, well, ours is a pile also. There is a small basket at the bottom of the pile that <laughs> is supposed to be containing it all, but obviously it's yeah. not. So. Aww. Well, we'll work on that. Happy holidays to right. them, to our pets and yours. Right. Yeah. yeah, and then the, the eight years ago item was we were talking about morning woes, you know, just like getting kids up, getting them out of the house, oh. all that stuff, which, you know, we don't have to deal with anymore. No, well, you don't have kids in your house. I don't. So you don't know whether they get up or not. Well, I know, I know the figure skater gets up because she has practice at <laughs> five in the morning, like several days a week, yeah. <laughs> and she lives with her teammates so they can ah. keep track of each other. Well, that's a good way to do it. Yes, yeah. if for some reason one of them were to miss their alarm or something, then the other two would be able to good. rally them and get them get them yeah. going. So. Yeah, well, we get we get going very early in the morning here. I mean, I'm still getting up at 6 a.m. to do prayers, and my husband is usually getting up then because he starts work at 7. My mm -hmm. son starts work at 7 uh, when he's working. Uh, my daughter works doesn't work till later, but she's up early just naturally. So yeah. usually somebody has to wake my son up, but the rest of us just kind of get up on our own steam. And uh, mm -hmm. so by like, you know, 6.30 or so, everybody's up and around getting breakfast and, you know, being all grown up and stuff. So yeah. we're, we're doing pretty well in that respect, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have any morning woes at the moment. Yeah. Um, I have... Grown up kids. That's well, I have grown up kids that... And then at least this past semester, my son had an 8 a.m. class every single day. Yeah. So wow. he had to... He had to get himself up, and I think, you know, from the, from what I can tell, which isn't a lot, <laughs> but um, he did seem to be doing it. Yeah. So good. Well, so the morning woes are are lesser. Yeah. I mean, what I find now is that, um, especially right this minute, when I don't go to the library. I mean, when I am going to the library, it can be. 6 a.m., 10 a.m., 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. It could be all different times of day. <laughs> yeah. um, but it, now that I'm not doing that and um, I'm just doing everything freelance and remote from home, yeah. sometimes it is hard to make myself get, yeah. you know, there's not enough hours in the day to get done what I need to do unless I get up and get yeah. moving and... It's, it's very hard sometimes yeah. if there's not a specific, you know, you need to right. be at this place at this time. Right. Boy, so. yeah. I was always a sleep-in person, but getting up early in the morning, you do really get a lot more done. You really you can do. manage it. Mm -hmm. You can stay focused, but... Yeah. Uh, it's true. Mm. It's a very mature thing to do <laughs> if you can... Yeah. If or you, you can just can. fall asleep on the couch and then just sit up and start doing stuff. Right. <laughs> when you wake up. Right. Happens more often than not here. That's right. But I guess it's time to put this uh, podcast to bed and yeah. say that's it for the Parenting Roundabout Weekly Roundup. You can find all our episodes on Spreaker, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can find recaps, links, and an opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. You can also talk to us on our Facebook page, on Instagram, or on Twitter, where you'll find us at Roundabout Chat. And please visit our Amazon shop at amazon.com slash shop slash momitude, where you can find links to a lot of the things we've talked about over the years. We'll see you back here next Tuesday. Goodbye, Catherine. Bye, Terry. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>